Some friends, uh, Lindsey Graham, by the way, is going to be unveiling his immigration plan later today. We've kind of seen the broad contours of it. We'll talk about that in a half an hour. Also, Jared Kushner and Stephen Miller went up to Capitol Hill yesterday to brief Republican senators on the White House's plan. So there are a lot of uh, a lot of ideas on how to fix this crisis at our southern border. And it is, a, yeah, it is a crisis, just no doubt about it. And it's a five-alarm fire every single day. Uh, they're forced to do things they never did before. The press officers and our drivers. Uh, uh, the uh, people uh, are asked to work overtime because nobody is helping out anyone at our southern border, and it's got to come from Washington. Meanwhile, over the weekend, uh, Senator McElhane, Senator uh, Secretary McElhane, in acting, hopefully gets a full-time job of Homeland Security, and Patrick Shanahan, the, uh, the soon-to-be, the nominated soon-to-be, I think, confirmed Secretary of Defense, went down to the border, allowed me, uh, us, and our cameras to go there uh, to tell us exactly how they're working together to uh, to solve the problems at our border. And here's what they found. Here's what they said. We're at the McAllen area of the border and the Rio Grande Valley sector with the Secretary of Defense and Homeland Security Secretary uh, acting for now. What's going on at the border? Well, it's a priority. I mean, this is border security is national security, and we're here to secure the border. And the reason the acting secretary and I are together is we've got to get more aggressively resources in place but cure this permanently. You're at the epicenter of both the border security and the humanitarian crisis we're facing. This wall, this technology you see securing this area of the border is absolutely essential to us for those criminal elements, those single adults that are trying to evade capture. But we also saw today all of the families and, and unaccompanied children coming across and how we're trying to manage that dual mission at the same time. We have agents that, that have so many family units coming in that their time is spent just processing and moving them along to the immigration cycle when they need to be out on the line securing that border for people that are trying to evade capture or to bring drugs or something more dangerous in. I understand, Mr. Secretary, have decided to give uh, uh, over $1.4 billion repurposed from Afghanistan towards building a barrier with the Army Corps of Engineers. Your response? Well, we've got a plan in place now to build, so if you average it, a half mile a day between now and October. The money that you're referencing, the $1.5 billion, is going to increase that even further. We're doing things in months that used to take years, and I feel really good about the progress. We spoke to Jay Johnson on our Fox & Friends couch uh, a month ago, and he said when he came down and told people the urgency, lawmakers responded. I don't want to get you involved in politics, but how would you characterize the response you get from the urgency we see? So I was on that trip with Jay Johnson in June of 2014 when we had 4,400 people in custody in this sector. And what do you have now? 8,400. This crisis is much bigger than what we faced back then, and we need Congress's help. You've both interact with the president extensively. When it comes to the border, there was a report a week ago that he kind of blew up at you. He goes, what's taking so long with this fence? Is that true? And have you guys felt that, the frustration from the president? Well, he didn't blow up. He said, I need better results. Deliver more. The situation is extreme. Fix it. That's why we're here. I think this might be an example of where it works. Yep. You're the one who's been on the line for years. Is, is this effective? In this area of the board, you're going to see this concrete base and a full 18-foot steel bollard. See, see back here where it's even taller? That's what you're going to see when we expand the wall in this area of the border. And that is a very effective uh, approach to controlling the flow. Now, the other challenge is the river, the Rio Grande River. Right. It changes, obviously, in width and depth. Uh, let's go check it out and see what you're against. What's the challenges that come up and down this river? So they're immense. We have smugglers that are easily able to hide in that brush here, as you see across. There are many areas of the river on our side that look just like that, with dense foliage on both sides, so it's really hard to see what's happening. So the smugglers will, will use every technique available. They'll put a car full of drugs and float it across and then try to drive out of the river on the U.S. side. They'll float family groups across in one area, so our agents respond to that family and try to protect them, and they'll put drugs behind it. Uh, using a diversionary tactic. We make rescues every single day. Can you give me an idea how Homeland and Border Patrol 
is now helped by the Pentagon and defense? So in, in, on the river? Yeah, in the border security context, that kind of surveillance capability is so valuable for us. It extends our ability to see what's happening on that border so our agents can respond and interdict that illegal traffic. If we're doing the monitoring and detection, that means CBP can be doing apprehensions. When people say, wow, these kids, are, uh, these Border Patrol or a government or an administration, this one or the prior one, is putting uh, people in cages. What's the reality? <laughs> That's not the reality. So we're bringing people into processing centers. We're providing medical care. We're working to provide the best possible situation we can with showers, with laundry, while we process them and move them into a more appropriate facility. You said some a couple of times. Well, I got your back. Yeah. And you were telling it to the to men and women in uniform. What do you mean by that? Look at the burden that they're carrying. Look at the load. Look at the responsibility that they're assuming. These are great people. They won't let us down. We can't let those people down. And Kevin and I aren't going to let them down. We're going to fix this. We wasted three months talking about whether there was a crisis or not. I think that ground has shifted. It's pretty well established. There's a crisis. 100,000 people crossing a month, 60,000 families. That's a crisis that we need to deal with. And it can't be a political issue. It's got to be about protecting the border and taking care of vulnerable families Let's and kids. Let's get the conversation to what are the things we need to fix and what are the best ways to fix them. We can fix this. All right. Thanks, Mr. Secretary. You bet. Thank, Thank you, Secretary. Brian. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. You know what I take from that, Brian? That they are willing to listen to the people who are down there on the ground doing these jobs. They're hearing them, and they're going to fix the problem. The problem is uh, you need Congress to act. And uh, Lindsey Graham's bill has the framework in which Kevin McElhinney, and he, I'm sure he uh, probably consulted with him on some level, if you do what Lindsey Graham put out there, It'll actually fix the problem almost right away. Within a matter of weeks, the word will go out that once you get in, you're going to be detained for 100 days and sent back. Only 7% qualify for asylum, so why try it? Now there's no reason not to. Now you have to make it uh, prohibitive to do that. Other things, that's private property. If that landowner said, I don't want that retaining wall, and I don't want that dock, and I don't want those boats, the Pentagon and border security couldn't do anything. Well, we they're going to go through eminent domain. It just None, gets tied up in the courts. It's tied up in the courts forever. During the Bush years, they're still in court. Some, they can't even find who owns the land, so they can't build. They need the landowner to be cooperative and work with the country to secure the border. If the landowners don't, the Border Patrol can't do anything, well, unless they go to court, and it could take 15, 20 years. It was interesting to hear uh, acting Secretary Shanahan say that the president wants results. He is frustrated that it's taken so long. He's not the only yeah. one. A lot of people want to see things get fixed, but coming up I on was, a big election and nobody wants to give Donald Trump glad, a win on the other side. I was side. glad to hear him answer that question. Yeah. Because it was like, oh, this is what I talked to the president about. This was our conversation. Yeah. Uh, results now. Mm -hmm. and, he said, and he says, I'm used to working with that in business. Uh, people want results. They don't want to hear about problems. And that's when you have an engineer executive as secretary of defense. That's what you're going to get. He cuts through stuff real quick. He doesn't want to take any credit. He just wants to get it done. Good job. Two powerful individuals. Two